Hey y'all, um, happy Tuesday class. I hope you guys are doing well, you and your families. I hope you are continuing to be safe and healthy and that you guys are enjoying Fahrenheit 451. I know a few of you have already read the book, but I hope that you learn something new from it. Um, every time I read a book a second time or even third time, I always pick up something new. What I wanna see from you guys is for you reading the story, annotating inside, actively learn because I can see those things and then I also want to see you guys utilizing your resources when I don't know something the first thing that I do is research I google it myself I define words in Google in the search engine you guys can go to dictionary.com or webster.com to define words and then you can also YouTube it I am a firm believer that YouTube has a lot of the answers that you're looking for for a lot of different things stuff you don't even know um, so if you don't understand parts of the story first do your research I mentioned this in the last video but I don't think many of you are doing this enough because we should not be getting two and three weeks into the story for you guys to tell me once in a sign is due that you don't understand it um, we are too far into the story for you guys to say that to me um, especially when not many of you are actually reaching out to me for help if you are stuck we are in quarantine there is absolutely no reason for you not to uh, message me let's set up a conference call I'd love to talk to you guys you know I miss you and I want to help you with whatever it is that you're struggling with so just know that Moving on, the last video gave you a brief overview of what uh, part one, the, the the hearth and the salamander was about. So hopefully that helps you. Now he talks kind of fast, so make sure you can go and change the, cap, uh, put the captions on and you can slow the speed down or speed it back up if you want to in the, um, in the settings section. Um, so if you need to utilize that do that and also make sure you replay those videos if you need to so hopefully you found that helpful um, But I want to make sure that you guys have a context of what's going on So part of what inspired this book are the political views of World War II. obviously um, the Nazis had really controlled a lot of the things in society including the media what was being shown um, and then also there was a huge burning of the books there and the reason why they were doing that joseph stalin was um was really heading this type of control because he wanted to make sure that people uh had only a certain amount of information coming into them and that they were not being um confused about the things that were going on and he was trying to prevent a political opposition what also helped inspire this um, this book was the rise in TV and brought in, in media so around 1947 is when um, they began to uh, TV broadcasting became really popular and that was a uptick of um, marketing where they could sell people or consumers different things and also propaganda to get people to um, get on the bandwagon for whatever their campaign was and so really that that notion of political and media control uh, was in the forefront um, and as that started to rise of course what happened to the books the books started to people reading the books started to go down and I'm sure you guys can see how that is definitely very relevant right now but the question is why is this sounding so familiar you know uh, how would Ray Bradbury be able to predict uh, what might be going on right now in 2020? That is a very good question and that is because um, this is a dystopian um, novel and for those of you who don't know what dystopian novels are I need you guys to write that down. Dystopian um, novel is a, a subgenre of sci-fi which kind of talks about the futuristic uh, futuristic and an imagined society where things are basically going crazy and that there's some level of control on the political front on the technological front um, or the societal front um, it's basically society gone wrong and it portrays all the negative consequences when when there are shifts in society I was noticing in your answers when I asked you about setting when this was set in and a lot of you said 1915 to the 1916s. I, I applaud you for doing your research and seeing when it was published. However, that is not the truth. Um, it is alleged that people um, that this book was set in the future, um, which is the characteristic of dystopian novels and around 2026. So 
as you can see we're coming up on that time and so what they were doing this novel and what a lot of dystopian novels are a response to something that's going on in society right now in an overabundance of that how it could go wrong so obviously he's talking about right now the overuse of media and then some of the controls that were going on by the uh, Nazi Germany in Nazi Germany the Nazi Germany so some characteristics about dystopians um, is that there's usually some kind of free will or liberty that is restricted from the, the, the people in the society. Um, there's usually a use of propaganda and control and the citizens feel like they're under some sort of surveillance. And the way they recognize the characters, the, uh, the protagonists, is that they usually feel pretty trapped. They're starting to question the norms of societies or the system. They have a gut feeling that something is wrong. Um, this can be seen sort of like in, um, in, uh, in uh, like The Matrix, Neo in The Matrix, when he just felt like something was wrong. Or um, even um, the Netflix series, um, The Magician, the protagonist in there, I think that might be a dystopian, I'm not sure. Um, but hopefully you're starting to see um, how the novel is coming into play. So um, let's talk about part one, the hearth and the salamander, and then we can go ahead and move on. We all know how to annotate a story. Hopefully you guys, when you started to read this story, you looked up some key words, you analyzed the, the, uh, the title, right? I know you guys did that. Well, if not, let's go ahead and dig into that. So the hearth is like a fireplace and it symbolizes a home. So obviously we're talking about the home, right? And then the salamander is one of the many symbols for um, firefighter. And both of those things represent the fire. It, it represents the creating of fire, like the firefighters and the home, um, the harnessing of it. And um, so both of them both uh, symbolize fire. And Fahrenheit 451 happens to be the temperature at which books are allegedly burned. So all of that has a ton of symbolism in it and have having known that ahead of time could have helped give you a little bit of clue as to what the book was going to be about. Um, things that I want to clear up from last week about part one. Um, we are introduced to four characters. We have Clarice, um, which is the 17 year old girl that um, Guy Montag has been introduced to um, on the street. Mildred, which is Guy Montag's wife. Um, Guy Montag, which is our protagonist, and um, Captain Beatty so far. Um, books are illegal at this time, and the firemen are responsible for burning the books and, um, and t you know, basically keep uh, charging the owners of the books. Guy Montag met some girl named Clarice who introduced him to life again. He's introducing him to nature and how to feel again and having a sense of purpose. Um, conversely, Mildred seems kind of like half dead and kind of detached from reality um, with the seashell that she had in her ears, right? Um, and we discovered that Guy Montag began to steal books and keep them um, in the in the vent at his home. Captain Beatty is aware that he has stolen a book and he says that this usually happens around a certain time, but doesn't know which one and which one did he steal? He stole the Holy Bible and he doesn't know why it's significant, but he's not sure if he wants to risk it all and keep the book and trade it for one that Captain Beatty may or may not know he actually has. So he's got an internal battle going on so hopefully that makes sense to you guys that is a quick summary of what happened in chapter one or in, in part one i hope it made sense but you guys really really have to do your due diligence by um clicking on the words and actively learn and defining them if you don't know them and um and really doing your best to use your resource but also you guys i'm online all day long from 10 to 11 30 from 1 to 3 all you have to do is send me an email and say hey miss i don't understand what's going on can we schedule a conference um and i will happily get on the phone with you guys so make sure that you do let's that. talk about the assignments last week i asked you guys a bunch of questions about well three questions about the setting and the character some of you guys just copy and pasted the answer you guys, I'm extremely disappointed in that because one, I've already talked to you about it last week in the video. I told you that that is called plagiarism and that is a strict no-no. And also, you guys, I know you know better. Um, there's no reason why you guys can't look at the look at the answers on Google if you really truly don't know. But then just make a guess or you know use that information and put it in your own words. 
but please don't just copy and paste let's do better and i've already given you a warning and i told you it was going to happen if it happened so this time i'm giving you guys a zero you're just going to have to take that zero and make it up on the next assignment and if this keeps continuing you guys i will make a phone call to your parents because plagiarism is an integrity thing we talked about this last week and that's one thing that i do not do okay we need to be having integrity with everything we do how we do at one thing is how we do everything and if you are not doing the right thing now what are you going to do later hmm not every one of you is doing that and I do appreciate those of you who are continuing to keep your integrity and doing the right thing at all time even when nobody is watching. I do appreciate that and I know all of you are capable of coming up with your own answer so let's exercise that right to think and to um, utilize your resources and again if you still just cannot understand the text if you don't know what's going on then I expect you guys to take responsibility for your education and send me an email and we can talk about it okay um so part two is called the sieve in the sand um it's about 40 pages long you guys are going to be able to finish that this week i'll upload the second half of the reading tomorrow and the discussion on thursday um i suggest that you start by defining any vocabulary words that you don't know before you begin reading and make sure if there's anything highlighted that's either a note from me or um or like a, a definition or something like that um, to help you along in your reading. Know that I have done all of that for you, okay? I've done all of that for you. All right, so I hope you guys have a good day. Um, again, if you have questions, let me know because I'd be happy to hear from you. And yeah, that is it.